All right, we're here at Microeconomics. I'm John Bongiorno. I teach at Tri-C, Cuyahoga Community College in Cleveland, Ohio. And we're here to discuss the types of taxes, the difference between progressive, regressive, and flat taxes. And I start out with a musical clue using a song by the Beatles in the 60s who lived in a socialized country with extremely high tax rates and at the peak of their popularity they wrote this song called the tax man featuring these lyrics one for you 19 for me I'm the tax man and it's written from the point of view of the tax man which means the tax man is taking 95 percent of your income and I asked the students what would that do to your motivation there are the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. There is Taxman Green Vinyl 45. And there's the question I ask. And then I play the song. And you might be able to hear it in the background. In the interest of time, I'll stop it. Then we move on to some examples of the three types of taxes. Progressive, regressive, and flat. I push the first one. The federal income tax is the poster child for progressive taxes. Then I show them the tax rate schedule. And I basically say if you see a tax rate schedule with multiple levels, multiple brackets, multiple steps, where you see this phenomena at high income, you pay higher rates. That's what a progressive tax is. Then I show history, and then I describe some political impact, and I also use this to say that I use a lot of things from the Wall Street Journal. But there is a graph over time of the highest and lowest federal income tax bracket, and I have the presidents that were in office at the time appear approximately at their time in office. And I discuss some of the political implications of the tax rates that they had something to do with. Then I describe progressive taxes in words. There's always two ways to describe any tax. You could talk about going up the ladder and you could talk about going down the ladder. With progressive taxes, the more you make, the higher percent you pay. And in this discussion, I always push the importance of the percent or rate and not amount. But you could also say it as follows. The less you make, the lower percent you pay. Then we move on to regressive taxes, like the sales tax. Regressive taxes are the opposite of progressive, and that can be described in two ways. And then I move on to an example of the sales tax in Cuyahoga County. There's Ohio with 88 counties, and Cuyahoga is that plum color where our sales tax rate is 7.75%, 7 and 3 quarters percent. And then I talk about this little story about me being in line behind somebody that makes $3 million. And we're both buying the same thing, a skull cap. And because it's one size fits most, we might be buying the exact same thing. On the surface, it looks like a sales tax is flat because we both pay the same rate. They don't ask you, how much income do you make before they charge you sales tax? But effectively, that means below the surface, you'll see that sales taxes are effectively regressive. On the surface, they might appear like a flat tax. Below the surface, they're not. Flat taxes are also known as proportional, and a city income tax is a good example of such. With flat taxes, all taxpayers pay the same rate, but they pay different amounts. Then I introduce the students to these, these two people. The woman in the hard hat, her name is Jane Sixpack, and you're about to meet the basketball player in a second. But I ask the students how each of these two different people, she, Jane Sixpack, makes $30,000 a year. The basketball player makes $3 million a year. What would be their attitude toward these different types of taxes? The basketball player's name is... Oligopoly. There's his 360 maneuver. 
And then I use some mathematic, mathematical examples to support these statements. There's Jane making 30000 There's Ollie making $3 million. These are their federal income tax liabilities based on 2011 rates. He pays a much greater amount of tax. He pays a greater rate of tax. The federal income tax is progressive. The more you make, the greater rate you pay. That's progressive taxes. Then I move on to why sales taxes are regressive. They're effectively regressive. That means below the surface because she makes 30000 and spends it all. Half of that, I assume, is on taxable purchases. She spends all of her income, but he doesn't. And that highlighted row is the critical distinction that makes sales taxes below the surface regressive. At the cash register, both of these people pay seven and three quarters percent. But because she spends it all and he doesn't, as a percent of her income, sales taxes are only 3.9%. And for him, it's only 1.2% of his income. You can't pay sales tax on money you don't spend. That's why sales taxes are effectively regressive. Then I move on to an example of city income taxes. He pays a much greater amount of city income taxes, but both of them pay the same rate the same percent. So I use mathematical examples. Then I summarize it. These are the dollar amounts from those spreadsheets. He paid a greater amount in every case. But then I contrast that with the rates. When the, when the person that makes a higher income pays a greater rate, progressive. When the person that makes a greater income pays a lower rate, that's regressive. And if all taxpayers pay the same rate, it's a flat tax. Sales taxes below the surface, their true impact is regressive because Ali, who makes more money, pays a smaller percent of his income in sales taxes. Federal income tax, progressive, and city income taxes are flat. And that's what I summarize here. There's putting it into words. We've applied this to our two taxpayers, a high-income taxpayer, oligopoly, and Jane Sixpack. And then I caution the students that what I left out here is also critical. I did not address the favorable tax rates that applied to dividends and long-term capital gains. But in a short presentation, many assumptions and shortcuts need to be made.